What's going on, everybody? This is David Kleinschmidt with Understanding Ag, and I'm out here in the field with Eric Fuchs and Connor Pierce. Connor is one of our KDHE participants out here uh, in South Central Kansas uh, with Kansas Department of Health and Energy. Uh, has actually sponsored Understanding Ag to be a consultant on his farm to help him with cover crops and uh, you know uh, implementing soil health principles. Uh, Connor, we're out here in a cornfield. Can you tell us a little bit of history on this? Okay, so uh, we're standing in a 120 acre field. Um, there's 30 acres here on the north side um, that was covers um, last two seasons. Here, let, me, let me back up. Uh, this whole field last year was winter wheat um, harvested in June. Um, so after wheat harvest, 30 acres on the north side, got planted to a warm season cover crop mix. Um, and then after that warm season mix was a cool season mix. Um, and then on the rest of the field was double crop soybeans after that wheat harvest. Um, and then the, the double crop soybean residue just sat over the winter, no cover crop. Um, and then this, this year, this season, um, the whole field was planted to corn uh, mid-April. Um, same corn, same fertility across the whole field. The only difference is the cover crop versus the double crop soybeans. Um, so, same corn. Um, two weeks ago, we were able to pick the corn that was after the double crop soybeans because it was dried down already. Um, and then here on the cover crop side, um, we just got done picking it last night. Um, we had to wait two weeks on it to dry down versus the double crop soybeans. What was the percent moisture difference when you were picking those double crop bean acres versus so the two weeks crop. ago um it was 16 and a half percent on that side and then we got into this and it was all the way up to 26 27 and so we thought we better wait a little while before we can haul it in the elevator dry so great uh any other observations you notice in the field so i don't know if you if you look at the look at the residue here um for dryland corn in this part of the world um we don't see green leaf area at harvest when the corn's dry. Um, so it was really impressive to see, uh, going through the field, we thought the moisture almost would still be too high to be picking it, um, but it was just right. And so um, that green leaf area and plant health was something that we did not see at all on the, on the double crop bean side. Um, so just the difference there um, was really interesting to see. And then look at the, residue besides the corn stalks there's uh that residue left from the the cover crop mix there so um there's good moisture here so and how much rainfall did you get this year on it, this crop it was a lot less than a lot less than normal um i'd have to look for sure but um i'd say we're at least three or four inches um behind normal um so that that makes a huge difference in the in a corn crop there and then even after the corn was already mature we got some rains um, in this area so our the helped out the beans but the corn was already mature by the time we got that rain um, great so you had to wait two weeks to pick it was there any other difference in yield or anything yep so we saw we saw a pretty good yield difference actually um, and this is something we're going to sit down and figure out the economics on double crop beans versus the cover crop um, but after the double crop beans, that corn, um, we added up the scale tickets, um, everything like that. 115 bushel average, which you know, that's not bad corn for this part of the year, this part of the world. That's, I mean, we're making a hundred. In, in dry land. In dry land, dry land. This is all dry land. We're making a hundred, we're doing pretty good. So, you know, we, we felt not too bad about 115. Um, so we got done here last night, added up the tickets and it was 161 bushel average. Um, so you're talking about a pretty good difference there. Um, obviously, when you think about the economics, you have double crop beans versus cover crop. You might be able to hit a home run on this double crop soybeans every once in a while, but you don't have as much risk in the cover crop and you have the potential to graze it. Um, whereas your double crop soybeans, like they were last year around this area, were kind of a flop. So when you look at the economics of this year, these last two years, um, we kicked the double crop soybeans pretty good with the corn on this side after the cover crop. So, um, 
you look at it over an average, we'd have to sit down and add that up, but I still think economically this is way better. Um, then you talk about soil health. If you pull up a spade here, there's no comparison to over there. The structure, soil structure, even after just one year or two times with a cover crop, a warm season and a cool season, it's incredible how much different it is. Yeah, absolutely. And so with that residue management here and the, how much more improved that soil, uh, water infiltration is, I mean, that just led to us to look at this green uh, crop residue still out here and saying we were able to keep those plants alive longer, yep. you yep. know. And so taking consideration, I know you're going to graze it, it'd be different to see how much more cow days, everything yep. else you get compared to that, compared to here. So that really didn't take yep. into consideration too. I know you will, but I know this, this is a lot of good grazing right here. Yep. Another thing is this corn sat here standing for an extra two weeks. And I mean, we didn't lose any very little quality because of that. But if you look at the residue we just picked last night versus two weeks ago, there's so much more moisture here just because of that plants were standing longer. Um, it would have been different, you know, if we could get in and drill that part of the field right after we picked it versus this, but we're going to go ahead and do it all at the same time. So I'm sure if we don't catch another rain here pretty soon, we're going to have a really pretty good stand here. And then it might be a little bit spottier out there just because that residue isn't near as good. Yeah. So Connor, how old are you? I'm 24. So you just graduated from K-State. Graduated from K-State in 2019, uh, degree in agronomy. Okay. So, so when you went, when you started at K-State, did you know much about soil health? I didn't, nope. Did you learn a lot at K-State about the soil health? Not very much, <laughs> very little. So what drove you to want to, 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 when did you start doing cover crops and what drove you to want to start doing them? So I think in uh, spring or winter of uh, 2018, I went and saw Ray Archuleta. Um, that was something that he put on here locally. Um, that, that almost sealed the deal. I, I was hook, line, and sinker after I saw him talk for two days and was like, man, we got to try some of this. There's got to be something more to it. Um, and then, uh, Cheney Lake Watershed has been huge in, uh, doing some cost share stuff with cover crops, um, doing field days, um, partnering with Understanding Ag. Um, in this area, we're very fortunate to have uh a lot of sources if you will of how to get started in cover crops um good ways to get started you know uh and yeah so i i, I jumped in with the cost share program i farmed some of my own um and so i did a three-year program there and i'm all in on it now um and with working with david um on this field and uh and kdhe um but just differences like this are it, it's fun and it while you're improving the soil health um and making money at the same time it just it goes hand in hand um it makes farming fun um, and if you're making money too then that's what it's all about absolutely it kind of solidifies that soil health actually has you know some economic benefits that we can yep. receive absolutely. relatively quickly absolutely. if we're pretty intentional yep. about how we manage them yep yep so that's another thing getting started you know people would say three to five years you'll see a difference and even on this field one year we see a difference um so it just depends on depends on the weather obviously just like everything um there's a lot of a lot of variables um but every a lot of the time you'll see a almost instantaneous uh, change or difference awesome well hey thank you very much we'll let you get on with yep. your day See you next time.